I was always just playing PlayStation or knocking about with mates. So nah. Of course I didn't think I'd be dealing blow at 15. Everyone kind of knew each other's business on the block, so me and my mates knew what the older lot were up to. But I was much more impressionable than them lot. Like, I was proper impressed by the flash jewellery and new trainers every week, money always in their hands. I suppose I was just a bit of a prick. <laughs> I started off as a lookout. Just weed at first. They'd get me going round on the little runs and that. Then at the end of the day, the older lot would slap 20 quid in my hand and let me smoke a joint with them. <laughs> I'd go home feeling like a fucking legend. The bike was the first thing that I splashed on. I loved it. Proper fucking loved that bike. By 15, I had my own line. I'd proved myself enough to move onto cocaine instead of weed. And was clearing like a couple of hundred a week. Helping my mum out here and there when I could, without her clocking what was going on. Buying my little sister ice cream. I was doing all right for a 15 year old. The phone calls did my fucking nothing though. It was 24 seven, early morning, late at night, every day of the week. I'd be at school and get a call and if they wanted like a decent amount or were usual customers, you couldn't really say no. So I'd duck out of school early and cycle about hoping the old bill didn't stop me to ask what I was doing out of school and that. Where we met depended on how well I knew them. New customers I was power about, so we'd just meet somewhere outside so I could hide somewhere and bell them. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm five minutes away. But really, I was watching them, like trying to spot the undercovers. If they were regulars, it was more chill, sometimes It'd be their houses or their cars on road or even now and then the posh city lot would be throwing parties and I'd make quite a bit those nights. I'd be able to get a decent night's sleep and ignore some calls through the night. Sometimes they'd chat to me, but most of the time we'd just like nod and stay silent. I don't know how many times I heard, you look too young to be doing this and I'd shut my mouth, but be thinking, you look too fucking old to be doing this. Um, the worst part, um, probably the endless hours cycling about, or just stood in the cold and rain, waiting about for some prick wanting to dabble in a bit of coke during his time at uni. I fucking hated the re-ups as well. Once a week I'd have to pick up a new batch, always from some absolute shithole. The kind of place that makes you want to burn your clothes if you touch anything. I was slacking in school and started to slowly lose some old mates. They knew what I was doing and the older we got, the less easily they could be impressed by me, like, flashing money about. But I kept thinking, you know, fuck them lot. I'm helping my mum and sister and that's all that matters. You get comfortable real quick and stop being as cautious with it all. The first time I got arrested, I knew it was my fault. Some stern-faced middle-aged bloke trying to blend in and look urban. My fucking fault, man. And they slapped the cuffs on and I just kept thinking about how devastated mum was going to be. And of course she was. Even worse when I sat there 
reeling off the rehearsed, no comment that I'd been taught from young. Yeah, we got home and she just cried and cried. She said it was her fault for not seeing what was going on. Mum just had her own shit to deal with. She was grafting to keep a roof over our head and put food on the table. I'm sure she didn't recognise me that day. She was looking at me like I was a stranger. It sounds bad, innit, but I don't regret it. Them extra 20 quids here and there and the milk I'd bring home, I, I knew helped my mum. And yeah, of course, drugs can ruin lives and that, but I was 15, man. The people buying from me were adults who had made their own choices. If it weren't me, then it'd only be some other kid.